Hey guys, my name is Andreas and I welcome you to this YouTube video and I wouldn't have expected the last years that I will ever do such a comparison be between Vue.js and Alpine.js because um, they Ah, they are they aren't comparable because uh, Alpine.js is something you use when you just want to get into your code really quick. And if you want to skip all the Webpack building stuff, then Alpine.js is the thing you should use. But Vue.js is a front end framework. It has uh, plugins, it has routing and all the other stuff. But now there is Vue.js Petite and uh, we will just have a closer look what it is and what you can do with it. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button and uh, hit subscribe and we will see you in the next videos. And now come on with me. I absolutely do not have any idea how long this video will be because it's just um, I have never done anything with Vue.js before. So this is more or less like a uh, virtual unboxing, if you can tell it, like if you can name it like this. And what is PD Vue.js? It's an alternate distribution of Vue optimized for progress, blah, 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 blah. It is only six kilobyte. Uh, this is really, really tiny. It has a view compatible template syntax, which is um, nice when you're familiar with Vue.js and it's DOM based and it mutates in place, which means it is driven by reactivity. So there are examples, but we will come to this in a second. We just compare it to Alpine.js, which introduce itself like your new lightweight JavaScript framework. And the example is, oh, that's so comparable because the example of Alpine.js, if you can see it here, is uh, hosted on unpackage.com slash Alpine.js and they have X data to store variables. If we head over to Petite View, <laughs> and more or less the same example is here, but it's not called data, it's called scope. Mm, interesting, but they have also a counter which increases on. Oh, that's not a counter, that's a button which just expands something. But yeah, um, when we see Vue.js Petite and we will see Alpine.js, then we just recognize that there's only needed one Petite view and then you can just start anywhere on the page, which is the same like here at Alpine.js. And if we paste Alpine.js here in CodePen, then you see that it's rendered uh, really good. That we see here, that's the heading uh, heading one, X data, and in the heading there we have uh, the message set up, which is I love Alpine, and then you see X text, which skips HTML text, which you can see here. Um, they aren't rendered out; they they are escaped and. If you would do something like um, XHTML, uh, then the text would just uh, disappear when you do something like this. So then um, Alpine is uh, italic and if it's X text again, then it's escaped and you do not have to worry about code and something like code uh, insertion. Well, we have something even uh, more interesting about the whole construction here because you can uh, also put it into a diff and you can move the a uh, the the heading uh, level one just into the diff box and uh, into the diff element and then you see nothing even changes because it is block scope even even more or less block scope um, but Vue.js, I think, is a little bit more um, yeah, comfortable to do to deal with variables because that's the only way at Alpine.js to print them out to use X text or X HTML. You see it like here. It's not as easy as it is in Vue.js, for example. But what's the main difference? The installation of the whole thing is really easy. You just have to place the script tag here and do not forget the defer attribute and then you have also the possibility to use it as a module but you do not have to mount it into your application it's just there it is just ready yeah if you see here the script or hear the script it is just ready and it is manipulating parts of your dom 
The other way around, if you're heading over to Vue.js, then you see that you have to create an app, then you have to mount it somewhere into a container, and then Vue.js is doing the shadow DOM thing within this container. And you see when you click the button, then more or less the same happens when you do it on Alpine.js. But now there are two different ways to do it in Vue.js. There's the Options API and there is the Composition API, which is more or less um, something Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some people love it and some hate it, and I would I <laughs> would not say that I love any of them. I just um, think that I'm most familiar with the Options API because I started learning Vue.js with it. But composition is nice as well. And now we have Vue.js Petite. It's something completely different, and you see it because the installation is even as simple as is it in Alpine JS. Just use a script tag, defer it, make it an init so um, that Petite View should automatically query and initialize all elements that have a V scope on the page. And then we see it. So let's head over to this kind of website and place. Uh, we have the body here and we have to place the script tag into the head. So when you now see it, um, how have you have you seen it? It is just uh, the script tag wasn't loaded, and then when it's loaded, Vue.js replaced here the count uh, variable, and uh, when we click increase, then oh, all the magic happens. That's really nice because the X data was replaced with the scope. Nah, it's more or less just a naming reason that some that, that there aren't guys at the web saying that Vue.js Petite is an excellent clone of Alpine.js. Um, you have to declare your variables like you can do it exactly in Alpine.js. But this is a thing I really love because you can use your curly braces like you do it on Vue.js and you do not have to fuck up with the XHTML or the X text uh, directives from Alpine.js. Then we even have the at click and let's try something out. If it's just a for short form for we on click, let's just try it out. It is, oh, <laughs> that's so nice because it's really familiar to me. And uh, what, what else is there? What do we else have here? You can manually initialize it if you want to. That is when you do not want to put in it here in this part of the app, then you can just do it by yourself. You should do it by yourself and you mount it somewhere. So it's your whole page which is, which is being um, yeah, initialized and Vue.js Petite is running at. Or you can use the ES module build. And this is a kind of notation um, which I want to have some focus on because on caniuse.com, when we have a look at it, you see that JavaScript modules loaded via the script deck is a pretty new shit and it's used globally, but it is it can be used only by 69% uh, of all users. When you say, I do not have to, or my application um, does not have to run on a so-called browser Internet Explorer, then everything is fine. If you, have, if you want to run it on the at least one of the latest Chrome versions, then everything is fine as well. And um, yeah, you can even test it. But there are some known issues that the Edge fetches, blah, 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 Edge Microsoft, what are you doing again? But okay, um, so here we see that you can uh, do all the um, Node.js module thing even in the browser and nothing really happens, but you have to put a module tag behind. So it is shipped as a module and there is something different than uh, compared to the normal petite one. Uh, yeah, you see it. Then what do we have as well? We have here a full real world example and then let's just paste it into the code pen. What is the real world example? We have two variables here, even with a computed, which is called getter. And um, we have uh, methods and we have just data. So um, there is a difference between Vue.js and Vue.js Petite uh, un un until now because we do not have to declare data. We do not have to declare computed. It's it's just with a get in front and methods are just just declared. You do not have to put it into the as, as compared in the options API where you have something like methods and you 
put an increment in it. Uh, it's just methods. And uh, it just works. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let's dig into the whole thing even more deep. Ah, for example, here we have it. Yeah, if, of course you can mount it into diff containers and that makes it really interesting because you can create multiple app, apps and uh, include it into yeah, the same page and control different regions. You also have lifecycle events, but it's a slightly different compared to Vue.js, um, to the regular Vue.js. You have to uh, declare it with a at view double dash that because you have to sign that it's not a native event because it's a Vue.js lifecycle event. That's why you have to put a at view in front of it. And then it's the same thing you can do here. The, the, the element is passed as, an, as the first argument. And OK, that's interesting. V effect. Oh, what is the V effect? Let's just try it out. What is V effect? That sounds uh, interesting. Um, but I think I've pasted not enough. Where is it? Where is it? I, I'm just a copy paste guy. I want just to copy paste and do not want much typing. So, OK. What is it? We see that we have a count, uh huh, and a V effect text content. Okay, V effect is something. What is it? To execute reactive inline statements. So the effect uses count, which is a reactive data source, so it will rerun whenever. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, we got it. Another. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK, so when the reactive here is changing, then it should take effect and something here should change. That's interesting as well. And now we get into something really interesting because components um, and once again, they are different. Uh, OK, so components are more or less just bow, bare bones. No template tech I see here, but it's possible as well. OK, templates. So we have here the template. Uh, oh, that's interesting. You have to place the template somewhere into your website and then run. Oh, let's just try it out. Copy it again and paste it into CodePen. And then we see my count is one, my count is two. What should happen? We have this is the template. This is aha. This is a component uh, class. It's not a class, it's a function actually, and the props are being passed here and they are available here. And then we have the template, which should be assigned and you see it like this here and the count. Aha. And increase once again is a uh, method. And where is the method? There it is. Aha. So we are inside of our component. We have to pass this component. Yeah, it's um, well. Then it's getting complicated, the whole thing. Global state management is, uh, yeah, it's easy. It's just uh, reactive. Yeah, we, we know this. Reactive, not reference, because reactive because of the type of an object. And we also have directives. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But what else is here? We have the text bindings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We show we once reactive not supported is this here computed as well. Therefore, we have the getter. OK, and the render functions because it does not have any virtual DOM. Well, if you ask me, it isn't a full replacement for Vue.js because it isn't meant to be one. It's just a well, there's Alpine.js and even Laravel shipped it out default by their uh, packages. And we have to release something compatible, a uh, comparable. Blah, blah. And this is Vue.js Petite. I think when you are familiar to Vue.js, I think Alpine.js is uh, worth the is worth have a look at and you should compare yourself if you enjoy Alpine.js or Vue.js Petite. It's not a full replacement. Some things should be uh, must be done differently, slightly different. So um, just try it out. And if you aren't familiar to Vue.js at all, I have a Vue.js online course on my YouTube channel. It's fully free. And if you had enjoy, if you enjoyed this video here, 
uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit subscribe and we see us in the next videos. And if you have some wishes on web topics, then uh, hit a, uh, leave a comment below and I will do the video in the next week. See us next week. Bye.